A Singapore prison service vehicle was involved in a hit-and-run accident in Simei, raising questions about protocol adherence by its staff. The incident took place on Tuesday, October 8, around 9.20 a.m. near Simei Street 3, outside Changkat Changi Secondary School. Dashcam footage captured by a cam car in the rightmost lane waiting to make a U-turn clearly shows the SPS vehicle passing on the left. As it did so, it collided with the cam car, causing a loud bang. A piece of metal appeared to dislodge upon impact, but instead of stopping, the SPS vehicle continued driving without pause. What makes this case even more concerning is the fact that the cam car driver pursued the SPS vehicle and found it parked at Changi General Hospital, in an area restricted to emergency vehicles only. Despite locating the vehicle, the driver was unable to confront the SPS staff directly and approached a traffic police officer on duty for assistance. The officer advised the driver to file a police report, and soon, a report was lodged. In a statement made the following day, on October 9, the Singapore Prison Service confirmed that the vehicle in question was transporting inmates and escorting officers from Changi Prison Complex to Changi General Hospital for medical appointments. Approximately 400 metres from the hospital, the right side of the SPS vehicle collided with the cam car's left side. According to the statement, the driver of the SPS vehicle did not stop after the accident, violating the Singapore Prison Service's own standard operating procedure. Under this procedure, the staff is required to stop and assess any damage after such incidents. The SPS expressed regret over this failure, admitting that their staff had not adhered to proper protocol. The SPS further added that they have since contacted the camcar driver and have also lodged a police report. The Singapore Police Force has confirmed that investigations into the case are ongoing. This incident has sparked discussions online about whether the level of accountability for government agency drivers matches the standards expected from ordinary drivers. Viewers, what do you think should be the appropriate action when it comes to public service vehicles involved in accidents? How should agencies respond when their staff fail to adhere to protocol? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you for tuning in to 2230, and remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth news coverage. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss a new update.